So I'm coming, Tommy Polak, I'm coming from uh, Goodyear, tire and rubber company. Um, we are one of the leading uh, manufacturers of tires, as, as many of you know. As you can see also, we have a long traditions of, of aviation with the, with the famous Goodyear blimp that is pictured here uh, above our headquarters in, in Akron, Ohio. What I'm gonna talk to you about today is, is a little bit of a more of a specific case. So related to when something really goes wrong at sea and how we see it and experience it from a shipper's perspective. Now, you all know this because we mostly work in logistics and supply chain, so things go wrong all the time. And, and that's part of the business, right? And, and why they go wrong? Because multiple events, anything can happen, could be weather, could be whatever, so things go wrong. That's understandable, right? We as all shippers understand that things go wrong and there are disruptions, however, what is crucial is that what do we then do when something goes wrong and how do we rectify it? Because in the end of the day, there is a customer at the end of the supply chain who's paying money to get the product. Typically it's a consumer. Sometimes it's an industrial customer, but still there's a customer. And they are really not that interested of what happened, right? So we can have multiple uh, topics. I listed here a few general ones. Okay, the vessel is late. We have issues in the origin port. Uh, we are late during sea because of weather or because we just decided that we want to burn less fuel. And what does it matter we are two days late on the destination port, right? Big deal. I got told by my transportation team when I was preparing for this presentation that the acceptable industry practice is to measure on-time delivery on plus minus five days. Now, I'm still not sure if that's 100% accurate and true. I hope not. Some of my most discerning customers measure my on-time delivery performance on a plus minus 15 minutes. Now, if I go back to BMW, for example, and say, look, my key carrier is happy to be five days late, so I hope you're okay, Mr. BMW, on that. Why don't you just stop your factory and wait for five days for the vessel to arrive? They wouldn't be very happy. We talk about transshipments, like Philip uh, adhered. Uh, it's a little bit similar story at, at Goodyear. We try to avoid as much as possible transshipments because it rarely goes well. Uh, it rarely goes quickly. And, and to us, uh, the lead time so the end-to-end, door-to-door lead time is, is really what, uh, what matters. And then, of course, we have some of the issues related to documentation, paperwork, and, and the accuracy of, of information. What I really want to talk about now is something extraordinary. And, and in order to prepare for this, I took an actual case that uh, happened uh, last month. This is an event that happened early May as many of you uh, understand and know probably the exact case. Um, unfortunate event, so a fire on a vessel. Okay. Luckily, the fire was put out. No catastrophic damages to anybody, no casualties. It's all good news. Let's look at it, what it means for us and for my cargo. So, 4th of May, there's an incident alert by the carrier to my global procurement team, which happens to sit in somewhere else in the company. But okay, we get the information, there is an incident. The next day, the carrier comes back and says, you do have two containers on this particular vessel. Is that correct? Is that an accurate statement or information? That one we can ask ourselves. Well, of course, we started asking on that, that, how much cargo do we actually have on that vessel? Now, as many companies and shippers, Goodyear also uses freight forwarders, free PLs in between. So the following day, uh, my freight forwarder tells me, you have 22 containers on this ship. Okay, we have 22 containers on the ship, excellent. Can you now then check that I had 22 containers on the ship? 
Can anybody verify how many containers do my company have in that particular ship? So on the, on the 6th, relatively quickly, we got the confirmation back that you have 32 containers on the ship. Okay, excellent. Different entities within the Goodyear corporate family put some extra cargo in, understandable, maybe it takes some while to, to check it. So we have 32 containers. Then there's a third advisory coming in. The fire is now under control, no major issue. Vessel is now sailing to another port. Good. So happy conclusion? Not really. From a shipper perspective, of course, my first and foremost concern is what am I gonna tell my customer? So now that I know those 32 containers, I can try to figure out which of my customers are impacted and which cargo that I have sold is actually there. And I need to inform them that there is most likely going to be a quite severe delay. Or then I need to take alternative measures of providing them an, an alternative shipment of the same product. So I'm quite interested to know what's the condition of my cargo, right? Would that be a fair statement? That as a shipper, you're interested to know what's the condition of your cargo. 6th of May. All right, so vessel is then proceeding. Now it's sailing to Spain. Five days have passed, no information. Vessel will arrive in Spain at some point. There's a new ETA. No information on the condition of the goods. We proceed on the timeline. We persist and pursue the other parties. We can scroll this forward. Vessel has now arrived in Spain in the meanwhile and is leaving Spain and proceeding. 25th of May. By the way, 25th they are selling, telling me that it arrives the same day in Hamburg. Now I'm not an expert in, in maritime shipments, but that sounds quite quick. Okay, actually it's not, so there's a correction. So it will be on the 27th, and then it will stop in some other ports as well, including the, the nice location we are in here. They're also doing now a survey of the cargo. Now we are in June. 3rd of June, a couple of days later when the ship has already arrived. 31 containers have arrived. One is presumably in Spain. At least good news, it was not thrown overboard, but it might be in Spain. And then, of course, we start the other procedure of saying what's the damages, claims, who's liable, how we're going to compensate this issue and everything. Now, we understand things go wrong. What do I tell my customer? What do you as, as carriers want me to go and tell my customer? That we are asking, and we are asking, and we really don't know. With this age of technology, I just not acceptable. I mean, come on, guys. We should know exactly what is where, which container is where, where is it on the ship, what's the, what's the condition, where is the ship, what's the ETA, what's the date line. There should be active communications coming proactively back to us as the shipper. Now, I do understand that the freight forward in between puts some complications under the process. However, there should be a better information flow. Okay. So what do we then require? And we are not asking the moon here. So we're talking about the general standard cargo flow. And we understand that there is work to be done. And we are not asking the, the carriers to create massive control towers or administration teams to keep up to date and manage things and manage information. But it would be nice that there would be a data repository, information existing online that we could then log in and find out the status on our own. Because I have a lot of shipment planners. I have a big shipping team. I have a lot of people working on import-export, right? We are not a big uh, shipper, so globally we do around 150,000 TEUs a year. In, in EMEA region that I'm responsible for, we do around 30 to 35,000 a year. So we are not big, we understand we are a medium-sized shipper, but still, 
it would be nice that we would have access to this type of information and know what's going on, what's the status, what's the condition, any updates. So, in this context, when something goes wrong, it would be very nice, very beneficial, very helpful for us, as well as the final consumer or customer at the end of the chain, to be proactively alerted about any exceptions, any issues going wrong, any status updates. Also, it would be nice, then, if we purely talk about shippers, is that if you can't meet the delivery timelines, that we would have nice announcements of why are we deviating, what's the reason, what are the new timelines, and we are holding into those, uh, those dates. Because like my colleagues here presented, it's the variability that kills us. You can be slow, but be reliable. And then lastly, when things then really have gone pear-shaped, and everything is uh, crashing and burning, um, it would be nice if there would be a productive dialogue and discussion and kind of a, some help and support of finding solutions and solving the problem together. And a lot of this should be quite easy things to achieve if we use the modern technology. And the good news is that uh, most of this technology exists already today. And it's not uh, hugely expensive either. So there's an opportunity that we see here. Thank you very much.